G'day champions, uh, we've got another 2203 here. I've mentioned to the customer that it's probably time for some preventative maintenance on this one. He's brought it in for crackling and not as punchy as it used to be. Hopefully that's not due to deafness <laughs> and it's actually the amp's fault. All right, so a quick look at the back. It's got the usual crusty uh, chassis there from stuff dropping in the vent. Uh, we've got some what looks like replaced caps there. No uh, aftermarket drilling of the rear panel, which is good to see. These things are getting a bit valuable now, so you probably uh, want to try and keep them as stock as you can, or at least make any mods you do reversible. Date code 87, uh, 44th week. And then you've got all these uh, replacement ones, which appear to be generic, like no name. All it says on them is the capacitance, voltage rating, and bracket 2. So there's no branding on there other than that. Got some strange blobs of silicon on all the bolts. Like maybe they were having an issue with uh, transformer resonating, and that was their... <laughs> Best solution. Got four electro harmonics, EL34s. They've all got intact ghetto, no real evidence of overheating. Uh, hard to tell with the black base, but all the writing looks fine. Oh, 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 actually, no, I take that back. Upon a uh, closer look, I can see metallization on the inside of the glass here on this valve, so I think this one's gone nuclear. Just around this area, you can see there's like a more mirror. You can't really see through the glass. Well, I'll remove that valve and give you a better look. So you can see there. On the inside of the envelope, it's metallized the glass from the plate getting incredibly hot. And because it's localized on that, that side, it makes me wonder if maybe it's a suppression grid failure. Uh, where one of the grid wires like breaks and points outwards towards the plate. I don't know, hard to tell. But yeah, in that one spot there, it's, it's, uh, it's gotten very hot, but not on the other side. So... Alright, so a quick look inside. It's not looking too bad. I can already see some uh, pretty scabby work there, but we can fix all that up without too much trouble. Again, with the writing notes in the chassis. Champions, get fucking notebooks. Looks like we've had a bit of drama here in the past. We've got some scorching on the board near the uh, main rectifiers there. Still got the stock uh, bias caps. We'll be changing them out. And you've got this mountain of uh, three resistors in parallel. Uh, people will do anything but order parts, eh? So that's one of the droppers, uh, I'm assuming, well yeah, that's the first uh, preamp dropper, so that's been replaced at some point, probably went open circuit. But with that nasty looking valve out there, I just want to check the screen grid resistors. 0 0.98, 0 0.99, 0 0.98, 0 0.98, so they're all within tolerance. Alrighty, so we're over at the tester. Uh, Got about 400 volts on the plates, 403, 410-ish on the plates, 404-ish on the screens. Uh, we're drawing a healthy, uh, pretty balanced 20, 22, say 20, let's set it to 25. Uh, and over here we're drawing bugger all. So these two valves are cooked. So she would have sounded pretty weird because you've got half the, half the quad conducting and the other half not. I've put them in the order they're in the amp, so... Uh, this side would have been doing two thirds of fuck all and this was doing all the work. So it would have been pretty horrible sounding output stage and pretty pretty neutered sounding as well. And just to demonstrate, it's not the valve tester's fault. I've swapped them, uh, those two with those two. And you can see the problems followed the two valves. So uh, new match quad of EL34s required. So just inspecting the valve sockets. There's no evidence of arcing or any, uh, any serious damage there. So we'll give the Contacts are clean and retention and uh, pop a new quad in there and just see what the rest of the amp performs like and uh, fire off a quote for this one. Got my poor little JCM 2000 TSL 100 for testing the uh, aftermarket boards over here. I've sort of adapted it to uh, be able to just drop stuff in and out real quick. I've um, put some metal standoffs on the plate and just used a couple of screws instead of the, the plastic, uh, plastic standoffs and I've got some just... I've made some little thumb screws that I can just quickly put the whole unit in with just four of them out of the six. Um, but what I will do is I'll borrow the test set of valves from them because I know they're good. And uh, we'll try them out. Just looking at the top reservoir cap here in the uh, LCR. It's just starting to get a bit bulgy in the center there like it's trying to off gas. Don't ask me why you'd replace uh, four out of five caps and leave one behind. I, I don't understand that. <laughs> and if you were going to replace any, wouldn't you replace the first reservoir node? I don't know. Anyway. All right, we're giving her a bit of juice with the very smack over there in the corner. We can tell uh, other than the inrush, there's no uh, big pulses of current or anything like that. So uh, 
just wait until we get some conduction on the output stage and if all is well there and the bias doesn't go away uh, we'll give it the full belt just checking the bias supply there minus 30 something it's good and it's equal across all the output valves so that's good let's give it the full mains through a bit of inrush even though the heaters were already a bit warm and settling down about 50 watts 52 watts something like that with just the heaters all right now we're probably looking at around one volt on the uh drop the output transformer primary that we're we're looking for just turn the volume down for a sec all right so we're settling at about 0.8 on the left and 0.7 on the right so not not bad a little bit cool it's only drawing about 103 watts you'd expect to be drawing about a 50 percent bias about 130 something like that we'll give that a tweak and just see if everything's sort of behaving as expected yeah 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 not bad not bad not bad all right we're at about one volt on the left and about 0.9 on the right so about 120 watts from the wall sweet as a little bit of tiny bit of hum there but nothing too bad we get quite a bit from uh from the lighting around here as well so that's something to bear in mind well, i can hear a bit of hum, uh microphonics there coming from v1 so I think we might factor in, I'll roll them, uh, when, when we say tube rolling we mean uh, swapping their positions to find the uh, quietest combination so if you've got a particularly uh, noisy valve it might be fine in the uh, phase inverter position um, but then the one that's in the phase inverter might be quieter uh, so you put it in the first position blah 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 you swap them around you find the quietest combo if there's still one that's standing out then you, uh, you look at replacing it that one's properly ringing we could probably get it to feedback Yeah, until I grab it. That's ringing out. Oh, that sounds lovely. And then I hold the valve, and it goes away because my hand's damping it. So uh, we're up for four EL34s and one 12AX7, maybe. Uh, we'll see what that is like in the phase inverter. Just one sec. All right, so we've got two electro harmonics and one whatever the hell that is. So I might try that one in V2. Uh, it looks Russian made too though, but some Russian valves don't like being in a cathode follower position. So we might have to maybe see what we can use uh, and put a JJ's in that position and see if one of these is quiet enough to have in V1. So they don't have to buy two valves if if they don't need to. I do try and save my customers money, champions. I'm not trying to make a sale left, right and centre. I understand people have... Uh, Got quite a bit on their plate at the moment, financial-wise. So we try to keep their gear running for a reasonable cost. Oop. Oop. We got some dirty pin action. Jesus! All right, so I'm a bit sus on this one. The pins are really corroded too, so I'm just going to put that aside for now and put a known good one in there. All right. So we've got some issues with that with that valve socket champions. There's something funny going on there. Uh, as always, it's an onion. Let's see if we can isolate that to one pin. Probably not. So I think we're gonna we're gonna have to clean those sockets pretty hard before uh, before we can go any further with you know, the nitty gritty, because uh, that's obviously a <laughs> bit of an issue there. Uh, Rightio. So I'll see if that socket cleans up. If not, we'll have to factor in a replacement and we'll put a new belt in there and see what the others are like. So having a look down here, you can see some spillage there, but it doesn't look like any made it onto the socket, which is why I thought, you know, we'll just um, run it. But um, there may may be some residual uh, contamination in there that's been cleaned off. So I'll give them a couple of cleaning cycles with some toothpicks and some alcohol and we'll see how we go. Well, this is a weird one, champions. I gave it a good clean and retention. It's still doing weird shit. When I just put pressure on the uh, socket. <laughs> uh, that's a weird. You know what? Um, just moving the chassis then did it. So I think we could have a crack solder joint on the circuit board or anywhere really. Uh, found it. Loose bolt on the ground. <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> uh, just moving that, moving that socket was uh, enough to flex this chassis enough that it was making intermittent contact. So I'll just tighten that up and we'll start again. Jesus, it's actually a good example of the weird shit that can happen when you haven't got a great ground. Even when you turn the thing off, all the fluttering and pops and crackles and stuff, even in standby. Yeah, sometimes it's interesting to see these kind of failure modes, ones that aren't going to harm anything anyway. But because it's a preamp node, you don't notice fluctuations in hum because all the hum's more or less filtered out. There'll be a bit of fluctuation in the ripple at that stage. But uh, the biggest issue we'll have is oscillation because each of the anodes aren't isolated from each other. So you've got no filtering, so therefore it's like connecting all the anodes together, which isn't desirable. <laughs> anyway, let's tighten that up. Ah, the plot does indeed thicken, yet again. So uh, I didn't even put any pressure on that at all. And it was spinning free. I thought, what's going on here? The uh, Someone's done it up too tight there, champion. And you can see the corrosion on the brake there. They've sheared off the screw, so I'll have to put a new screw on there. Looks like it's happened quite some time ago too. You can see the corrosion on the actual brake of the screw head. Uh, so I'll see if I've got an original brass one. But you've got to be careful with these brass ones. They don't take a lot of torque. Brass is like cheese in the metal world. On the handle of a screwdriver, sort of three fingers. You can't be tightening them up with the full-on G.I. Joe grip, you know? You know. Alrighty, I just popped a stainless one on there for now. Um, there's no brass ones, the weird imperial brass size. We just put an MP, M, MP3, M3 uh, stainless one in there with a uh, nylock nut for now. Um, probably because these always break. Um, you don't find them floating around that easily. So uh, I'll see if we can find the original ones and put in there, but it's, you know, that's functionally fine. We'll fire it up again. All right, she seems pretty solid now. So everything 12 o'clock. Got some noise from the lighting and stuff, but some noise from the uh, wireless mic. A little bit, some, still some ringing there on V1, so we'll swap them around again. See if we can get a quieter combination than that. All right, so that's less microphonics. That's master and uh, gain all the way up though. That's like, yeah, death territory. Um, so it's a fair bit quieter in that position, so. Let's have a quick listen. I'm not going to mic it up or anything because I've got shit to do. But uh, we'll just see if there's any other issues with this before we fire off a quote for the big, big dog items. <laughs> Noticing an increase in hum there when I plug into the high uh, sensitivity, even with the volume all the way down on the guitar. That's with the gain all the way up, so I think we do have some grounding issues up the front end there, which I'll look into as well. But everything's working ish, <laughs> uh, so I think we know roughly what this one's going to cost, and uh, we'll improve the grounding where we can. So until then, legends. Sorry, not the best view there. Until then, legends, my cam camera kung fu leaves a lot to be desired. I've got to get back into it, champions. You don't use it, you lose it, right? See you on the next one. Be good to your mother. Or someone else's mother. Whatever. You do you, man. Just drink water. And hit the like button. And subscribe. And become a member. Alright, I'm going to go.